Well, this other guy that we've got here, uh, Peter Hay, I work with him every day and he is a, an amazing guy. We are surrounded by and interwoven with layered natural history. This complexity is Peter Hay's muse and never ceases to trigger new ideas for his art making. Peter's going to discuss the process and inspirations for three artworks that appear to be vastly different but stem from the same curiosity. Peter Hay is an artist working with embellishments of current ecological issues, which could be described as environmental realism. He has an AA from Northern Oklahoma College and a BA from Northeastern State University and an MFA from Louisiana Tech University. In addition to pursuing his personal body of work, Hay is currently the development director and PR director for Living Arts of Tulsa. Please welcome Peter Hay. Thank you very much. That was a, that was a great inter introduction, Steve. Um, so, all good creative work stems from a personal residence openly presented, and all new ideas develop through the labor. My work stems from a need to investigate the natural world, how I fit into it, and how it has come to be the way it is. I will discuss my creative process beginning at the community level, moving to the small scale, and then out to the universal. I can remember when I was a kid and all I wanted to do was romp around and explore the drainage ditches that ran through my hometown. And when I got home from school, these culverts filled with algae, trash, critters, they were veins of unharnessed nature flowing through the middle of small town America. While I would have loved to be out in the wilderness somewhere, Ponca City was big enough to keep me, a kid living a couple blocks from Main Street and Tiunga Drive, left with these ditches as my chance to discover the wild. So once the childhood haze of imagination began to wear thin, I became more aware of my surroundings. I began to see the stream was filled with oily street grime, uh, litter, and anything that was able to be carried downhill by the rainwater. The more I learned about this town's industrial history, the more I found myself standing in a synthetic creek. The algae camouflage parted, revealing a cement bottom to a stream, and the meadows south of town turned out to be oil sludge contaminated buyouts where houses once stood. These realizations stuck with me over the years, and they've become the foundations of the work I now make. When I moved to Louisiana to begin grad school, I felt a little out of place, and to seek a new connection with my new home became a personal priority. The process began with an exploration of Superfund sites um, put together by the Environmental Protection Agency within an hour or so drive of my house. While I was not sure what would come out of this, I found this site on the edge of Marion, Louisiana to be quite engaging. A neighborhood sits with a Superfund site directly across the street with signs telling me to keep out and make me wonder if that chain link fence actually holds anything in. The installation, Super Neighborhood, became my translation. I combined multiple photographs to create this image and projected it into the corner of a gallery and over a patio furniture set. A pink respirator mask sits in the corner on the table as a clue. The viewer can take a seat and look down the road at the super fun signs. Um, this became a representation of the town I grew up in, and it really could be any neighborhood. And as you spend time with the installation, it unfolds into a questionable setting. Uncomfortably comfortable, very much like the way I felt when I learned about the layered environmental past of my hometown, and as strange as it sounds, bringing me a little closer to my new surroundings. However, there are not signs or markings everywhere that chemical or biological manipulations have taken place because they're not all on the scale of a super fun site and it's really become ubiquitous with our day-to-day -day life. So after agreeing to take part in this show entitled Southern Patterns, I began to evaluate what living in the South meant to me. And although I'd lived in the South for several years at that point, I didn't really feel the right to call myself a Southerner. So I began to determine what in the South or what was mine um, in the south. So I headed to the small part that I could claim, and that was my backyard. My first realization was that there was an incredible, about, incredible amount of biodiversity there, and this led me to spend a lot of time soaking the, uh, the backyard up through making photographs like this, listening to the sounds, itching a lot of mosquito bites, and being caught off guard by this incredible spider on my basil. But being a renter left me with little knowledge of the parcel's history, and the more I thought about the yard, the more I realized the animals still living there, 
they were incredibly resilient. They lived through years of who knows what, mowing, pesticides, herbicides, thin biodiversity. In an effort to learn more about the microfauna calling my backyard home, I created and to create my southern pattern, I collected the tracks of these critters living in my backyard on powdered acrylic sheets. I would place the powdered trap between my shed and my compost pile, funneling any of the small creatures directly over it. Then I would photograph the tracks, overlay the collection of mark making, and transfer the image to a digital lithography plate. I would print it on an abstract background, and the color field surface represented the unknown habitat alteration. You can see where a toad made its way across the plate there. I think a lot of the small dots were left by um, a plague of daddy long legs that struck my backyard. This, I think, was a bird that hopped through, and over there is, I think, where a, a cricket or a grasshopper made its way through the plate. The resulting image is a lapse. It's a drawing collaboration with the fauna of my backyard and in turn my southern pattern. It stands as a 15 by 11 inch abstract monument to the strength of these small creatures and as a reminder that all of our actions uh, we take through our, our day, um, they, they help, they shape the world around us. But what shapes us? Aren't we all chemical sacks strolling around in a chemical soup? I mean, we share a significant portion of our genetic makeup with all other forms of life. 1%, 1.8% of our DNA differs from that of our closest relatives. And uh, in, the, in the animal world, not just closest relatives. But for this sculpture, the bridge, our unique 1.8% of nucleotide bases are represented as individual letters on copy paper stating, this is our soul. I repeated this on the page until there are 73,000 characters on each of the sheets. And then I had to copy the sheets until I had 783 of them containing more than 57 million characters to represent that 1.8%. And I created this with a powder toner copy machine. At random intervals, I would pull one of the freshly copied sheets and replace the source material um, as a way to imitate genetic variation. I'm sure you've all seen alterations on handouts or memos made from a copy made from a copy, made from a copy. Well, picture that buildup of flaws 40 or so times over on three-point font. This buildup, the small imperfections and distortions, they all result in a steady transition from legible type to an abstract field. The initial source statement evolved into an entirely new creation. At either end of the strand are magnifying glasses. They allow the viewer to investigate the pages for themselves, but they're tethered to the wall, limiting the amount of actual exploration. Much like the development of genetic science, or any science really, the more that is discovered, the more questions arise, and we are tied to the current reach of our technology. The structure and the content of the work is an attempt, it's an attempt to simplify the human genome, yet even this simple representation turns into an incredibly large and overwhelming piece. But what becomes even more overwhelming, although this was a real chore to hang, was, is the fact that the additional 40,000 pages filled with roughly 73,000 base pairs of information each that we share with all the other beings we swim around in this chemical stew with. So I'm out of time. Thank you very much. And everybody become a member of Living Arts.